Our patient was a 32-year-old woman um, who had no prior medical problems, um, and she was 21 weeks pregnant when she presented at the Munich Hospital um, with complaints of left-sided abdominal pain uh, and cough. Her symptoms started about, prior, about a month prior to um, that point when she was around 16 weeks pregnant. Initially, uh, at the emergency room at the hospital, they performed uh, an ultrasound of her abdomen that showed a suspicious mass uh, in the stomach. In, in general, in pregnancy, we try to avoid unnecessary CAT scans um, and uh, imaging that have uh, excessive radiation. However, in her case, uh, one was necessary in order to characterize the mass uh, better. So she went on to have a CAT scan, as you can see in the uh, your left image uh, on the red arrow, this is an abnormal mass that starts from the stomach and is pushing down the, um, the, the spleen here and the left um, kidney. On the other um, section, as you can see, there were almost uh, also some uh, lesions in her liver that there were suspicious of involvement of this underlying mass. Clearly, I mean, that mass uh, was suspicious for an underlying malignancy. At that time, we did not know um, what type. So unfortunately, her symptoms progressed gradually when she was still at the hospital there, and the treating team decided to go ahead and do a, a surgical resection of the mass. So she underwent uh, a partial gastrectomy, meaning they removed part of her stomach with the mass, uh, along with the, with the spleen. Uh, at the same time, they performed biopsy of those liver lesions in order to confirm the, uh, the involvement or not of that uh, unknown disease at the time. And uh, unfortunately, during surgery, the, the capsule was ruptured and, uh, and the main tumor was resected piece by piece, uh, rather than one piece in total. So um, the pathologist saw the gastrointestinal stromal tumor of that gastric mass. Uh, it was high mitotic index of 37 mitosis over uh, 50, per 50 high power fields. Uh, it was 30% necrotic, um, and uh, we did characterize a mutation that uh, and it carried a key exon 11 mutation. The liver biopsy also was positive for involvement uh, of uh, gastrointestinal uh, stroma tumor. And it was at that time that she had, um, when she had post-surgical complications, uh, that she was transferred to our center to receive further uh, surgical care and also um, for high-risk pregnancy. And at that time, they called us after the, uh, the pathology results were um, showed GIS, uh, and, at, and that's when we decided to. Uh, to start by checking uh, circulating tumor DNA as well, in order to avoid further scans at that time. So as you heard yesterday, uh, circulating tumor DNA can be helpful, especially if it's positive. Like in her case, uh, we're able to detect uh, the same mutation that was detected in the, by, the pathology, by the pathology of, uh, from the surgical sample. So as you can see, that, that particular mutation, the lead exon 11 uh, mutation, was detected 6.3%. Uh, of the total circulating um, DNA. So, uh, for, uh, due to that specific mutation, we're able to characterize um, where exactly uh, the mutation was in the exon 11, the two codons 557 and 558. Um, it has been, this, this particular mutation has shown that it has a slightly higher um, growth rate. Um, and also, because of the way the surgery uh, was performed in her case, and because she still had underlying disease, we decided to start treatment during her 26 week of pregnancy. Initially, we started Grivec at uh, 100 milligrams daily in order to assess her tolerance, and uh, over three to four days, we escalated to a final dose of 400 milligrams. In general, she, she um, tolerated the treatment fairly uh, well. Um, ex with the exception of one day, she had to be off because her liver enzymes increased, but uh, quickly turned up, uh, decreased the, the following day. About three weeks later, unfortunately, she, she, she experienced premature uh, labor, and uh, at that time, we had to hold the imatinate for uh, an expected uh, planned uh, C-section. But uh, a week later, she had to undergo an uncomplicated uh, C-section. Uh, and we were able to restart the mind six days later. Uh, she delivered a baby boy. Uh, it was, uh, he was preterm, so he had to be uh, admitted to the uh, neonatal ICU, intensive care unit, uh, but was discharged two months later in good health and remains in good health uh, to this moment. As uh, uh, the patient also has ongoing response to imagining now uh, more than a year later. 
you can see here um, uh, some imaging of the uh, response of the two main uh, uh, two lesions in the liver over time. As you can see here in the first imaging uh, on the left side, um, that was immediately after the C-section. And as we uh, go by time, every image represents at different time points. Uh, months later, the, uh, the lesions become darker. As we said yesterday, that means that the, uh, the tumor becomes necrotic or liquefied. That, that means response to therapy. And uh, here at the bottom right, this is the last uh, imaging that's fairly recent. As you can see, the lesions are uh, darker. You can see them better um, here. In addition to imaging, we also checked uh, another circulating DNA, a tumor DNA, in order to assess the response. And as you can see, three months into uh, her treatment of the um the exon 11 mutation from 6.3 was undetectable, non detectable at that time. That also goes with the response to therapy in addition to the changes in the imaging. So to conclude, in general, cases in, of uh, gist in pregnancy are very rare. There are about 15 cases described in literature. So from those cases, uh, most patients underwent surgical resection if that was feasible during the pregnancy, and the uh, liver or other um, TKS started uh, after delivery. Uh, in our case, we started the clivic while she was pregnant uh, because of the high risk of her disease. Uh, and in general, there is not uh, sufficient data. Uh, we don't know enough if, uh, if imatinib is harmful for the fetus, especially if it is given after the second trimester, after the first trimester, where the uh, major organs of the fetus have been formed. It would be, uh, again, ba uh, based on case-by-case -case, uh, basis. And uh, we have to remember that different kidney mutations have different risk potentials in general. And uh, always women with uh, GIST uh, that want to become pregnant should have that discussion with their oncologist about uh, potential risks and possible options uh, during uh, for pregnancy. And lastly, uh, circulating tumor DNA may become in the future a surrogate marker of response uh, which would be especially useful in cases like, uh, in situations like pregnancy when you're trying to avoid uh, radiation from CAT scans or PET scans um, so we can have that blood test to tell us if the patient's responding or not.